Dear all, welcome to our session. Today we are going to host a policy dialogue session, which is going to be hosted by Daffodil International University in association with Global Entrepreneurship Research Network and Startup Nations. Today's policy dialogue session is entitled as Ways to Support Entrepreneurs During Crisis and Driving Economic Recovery. And for this session, we have with us our estimate guest from the national and global level. First of all, we have with us Dr. Kelly Shepard, who is the president of Entrepreneurship Mindset. He has been with working with entrepreneurial activities for last uh, decades, and he has worked with the entrepreneur mindset activities in South Africa as well as in Bahrain. Today we are going to learn so many things from him. Next we have Ms. Mohushina Yasmin, executive member and additional secretary from Bangladesh Investment Development Authority from the Prime Minister Office. We have also with us Krishina Fernandez, Vice President of Policy, Global Entrepreneurship Research Network. We have also with us Dr. Mohammed Sobul Khan, Chairman, Daffodil Family and Daffodil International University. So I would like to welcome all of my guests to our event. Thank you so much for giving your precious time today. First of all, I would like to say that during this COVID-19, we are all actually having lots of problems, the, the challenges the entrepreneurs are facing during this COVID. So it is very important to support them. There are many policies have been taken by the global leaders to support these issues. So in our country, we are also facing this kind of problem. So together, if we can bring some policies. So that's why we have organized this program. This program will be moderated by Dr. Muhammad Sulaq Hansar. So I would like to hand over this whole program to Dr. Muhammad Sulaq So sir, over to you. Sir, you are muted. Okay, sorry. So thank you very much. Uh, with a very short span of time, I understood because everyone you joined, and it is a good time and good program. I should say that in Bangladesh context, I think it is necessary now to identify the problem and also to do the proper research. So I'm sure that uh, with all of your participation, we'll get some guidelines so that we can also talk with the relevant authority of our government. And at the same time, the policymaker, and as you agree with me, as a global entrepreneurship networking, everyone is also eager to do the policy and to develop the ecosystem. So what uh, we found that every year and every time the global entrepreneurship network, uh, this global entrepreneurship research network, so everything we, we understood because due to cause of this implementation of the properly the ecosystem. And uh, you will be happy to know that Bangladesh is a very small country. We have the plenty of population, very close to 100 million people in our country. And you'll be also happy to know that more than 60% people are very young generation, it's below 35. And the people has the mindset, the last five to six years, this is a very uh, fundamental or the very positive mindset is changing about young people. They like to become entrepreneur because previously the intention was that young people was that they like to go to the government job or any private sector job. But now their first choice is becoming to become an entrepreneur. So at least they have the they have the positive mindset. And I hope that this is one of the radical change in our economical atmosphere, considering the uh, grassroots economy or other factor. And this is true that the Global Entrepreneurship Network, especially the Global Entrepreneurship Week last few years, I'm sure that they also have played a very good role. And at the same time, you'll be also happy to know that the, like today, the BIDA, the Government Prime Minister Office, IT Ministry, Startup Bangladesh, uh, A2I, access to information, this another initiative by the Prime Minister office. So these sorts of lot of initiative is already developed in our country in the last few years. I should say that it's, it's not more than four years. So this is a very much uh, positive impact 
considering the scenario because as i already mentioned because uh, you know that uh, one of our slogan uh, it is now going to be the very popular that i don't like to ask in your job rather i am working to give you the job this is the one of the is called the bengali slogan the chakri khosbo na chakri dibo so that calls as chakri means job so this is a very one of the common slogan is going to be implemented everywhere and so that is i should say that there is a very positive sign in our economy and even that our prime minister is also giving the every times whenever she got the opportunity she always give the message that please try to become an entrepreneur don't work don't wait for the job so try to develop the uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem and government is also giving some fund is called the startup bangladesh they are giving from 1 million bangladeshi taka fund and also the innovation fund government is also develop develop two years back so you know the through the pitching through the competition government is also giving this sort of fund and at the same time you will be also happy to know that the, our university the first time in the country that five years back we also initiated one department it's called the entrepreneurship and innovation department so a lot of this competition lot of this uh, you know that the course curriculum we implemented last few years and again i should say that the government has very clear focus because you know, i'm sure that you will agree with me if the government is not moving forward is the government is allowing to the young people to become the entrepreneur it will be very tough to move by the uh, young people to set up their startup or set up their business and even that uh, i i love to share with you because uh, Seven years back in 19, uh, 2013, I became the president of the large country's largest chamber. It's called the Dhaka Chamber of Commerce and Industry. It's called the premium chamber member of this country. It was established in 1957 in the almost the after the British regime of the country. So this chamber, when I got the opportunity to serve as a president, I took a one initiative to create the 2000 new entrepreneur. and i got the direct blank so blind support from the government especially the central bank government he himself and the bank is declared that okay i will provide the 100 crore taka 100 crore taka that is you know that's it's called the 100 million bangladeshi taka uh, 1000 million bangladeshi taka government is openly declared the central bank that they will provide the without collateral loan through the 37 uh, non banking institute non banking financial institute and the banking financial institute so Uh, this is the one of the first time i should say the government is also uh, support us that to uh, enhance or to expand this uh, slogan or the activities so i am lucky because in that time when i started this work i understood there was no policy there was no research there was no ecosystem there was not a single books is also right in any any of the entrepreneur that how a young people will start their business so from as I, as my background is as a businessman so i started my business from the very scratch level after my university graduation uh, in 1989 so i completed my graduation is first of the 1990 so without any experience i started my business so i love to say that in that time there was no startup so in the present time it was also a very startup i started my business uh, company in 1990 as a it company called daffodil computers and you will be happy to know that the this company when i started i become the joint secretary of bangladesh it association after 7 years that in 1997 and later on i become the president of the it association of the country in key thousand more than 3500 people job in my company so that is the one of the confidence i am also trying to establish to the young people uh, to develop the entrepreneurial mindset and i wrote few of the books based on my experience so now i think we should go to the you mr kelly and christina i hope that a lot of you and the madam osina i'm i'm sure that this is the time we should discuss that how we should develop the policy because the policy matter is very poor i should say the government is also fighting a lot to establish the policy so it is the right time Uh, I, we, we should uh, convey the message to the government how they should develop the policy, how they should develop the ecosystem, how they develop the guideline, and how they also encourage the young people to come to the entrepreneur. Because uh, you know that the, a lot of cases uh, entrepreneur they thought that oh, the money is the important factor. But I always love to say that look, money does not matter. Matter is how much you are innovative, creativity, professionalism, commitment. your ethical value your morality your focus if everything confidently you can prove then the lot of the entrepreneur are ready to give you the money 
uh, and I should I should love to I should say you that I love to say you that we also establish one venture capital company to helping to the young people. So that's all. I'm just giving some glimpse idea about my uh, background. So I hope that now we'll 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 just talk the crisis that entrepreneurs and startups are facing at present. So I I love to go to the audience. Uh, I hope that uh, maybe if the Kelly you can share first, uh, Dr. Kelly. Uh, I hope that uh, first I love to go to you. So if you can share some thoughts and some of your idea, so then we can discuss and we can present it to the, our uh, proper authority. That is especially the, our minister. You know the our minister, the IC, ICT minister. He is very young. So today is our closing day of our one virtual digital world expo. This is the first time government is also organizing due to cause of the COVID-19, and, and nobody realized it's very successful. There's a lot of minister participated. So at the last minute, he already uh, just uh, sent us the message that due to cause of the closing ceremony, the program will be continue until nine o'clock. So anyway, Dr. Kelly, please. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to make, I think, three major points. Uh, the first one is that COVID-19 is clearly a global pandemic with global ramifications and so requires uh, global kinds of solutions. Uh, I'm absolutely delighted to uh, say that uh, just yesterday, a former governor of South Carolina, my state, who is now the leader of the World Food Program at the United Nations, accepted the Nobel Peace Prize for the World Food Program. One of the things that has happened during the COVID pandemic is uh, food supplies have been disrupted throughout the world. And uh, you, can't, <laughs> you can't worry about creating a company if you're worried about where your next meal is coming from. Uh, the World Food Program does absolutely wonderful work, uh, but I would suggest that there is another way to do food distribution that is a, a kind of more entrepreneurial way, and that's the way that is originated by the World Central Kitchen, Jose Andres's foundation. And the difference is that instead of just providing food or providing money, World Central Kitchen pays small restaurant entrepreneurs to create the food locally, which gives business to the small entrepreneurs, to the street vendors, to the, the, those who have uh, food booths and markets to, to restaurants, uh, and consequently, not only provides food, but also provides employment for the people who are making the food uh, for everyone else. I think, I think that's a really, really interesting model. And I think we ought to try to figure out how to apply such a model in other areas besides food. The second thing that I would say is that, again, in every country, almost every country, if you look at the reports of the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor, there is a table uh, that shows the ratio of total entrepreneurial activity by women to total entrepreneurial activity by men in all the countries covered by the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor. There are only a couple of countries in which that ratio exceeds 1.0 because uh, <clears throat> in most countries, the startups by women are smaller. They're organized for different reasons. They, in, in the US, there's been an awful lot of investigation of this and startups led by women get something like 3% of the venture capital money. 
even though startups by women are more successful than startups by men, something that many people do not know. So uh, the second point I would make is that we should be supporting women entrepreneurs however we can. Uh, and the third point that I would make is that the Global Entrepreneurship Network already has an amazing opportunity to create change in many countries. If you look at the list of foundations that are uh, connected one way or another to the Global Entrepreneurship Network. It's a long list. It's a very impressive list. And I would hope that there could be an opportunity for public-private partnerships led by those foundations to accomplish both the food delivery goals and the support for women business goals that I've already outlined. Um, I think that one of the things that the Global Entrepreneurship Research Network could do is help to identify metrics by which um, success could be measured in almost any country. Uh, it, as I said at the beginning, it is a global pandemic. It requires a global response. And so consequently, I would suggest that there be experiments initiated on behalf of GERN in several countries with common metrics so that uh, we could learn what works the best in several countries and then try to take that to the rest of the world. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kelly. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sure that uh, we'll discuss a lot of the other points. And Christina, I'm sure as you have a lot of good experience because you are already working in the policy making. And you are also meeting with a lot of the people, those who are working in the policy making. As you know, the, the impact of the uh, pandemic, I'm sure that as I said, the, the impact of the pandemic is also giving the you know, a lot of the signal that how the global economy will be moving, as uh, Dr. Kelly has mentioned, that uh, nobody has realized that how the food, and definitely at the same time, the health sector, I think, you know, that the health sector, even the USA, Europe, and every country realize that health sector, how much poor, and how much it is not appropriate as per, as per the need. So that is why I should say that the young entrepreneur, there is a lot of chance to interfere or to engage in the food industry and at the same time in the health industry also. So considering this one, I'm sure that uh, in your opinion, you will also the, find out the reason behind such challenges and startup and entrepreneurs are facing. So let's, uh, we'll, we'll go to you. I'm sure that you are more uh, capable or more experienced to let us know that how we should move, uh, especially in Bangladesh context. Thank you, please, Christiana, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Dr. Khan. Thank you, Professor Kelly, for, for your very insightful comments. And uh, we couldn't agree with you more that there's a lot more that we can do at a global level to improve conditions locally. Uh, and that's one of our missions. Uh, one of the things that we found um, that this crisis has uh, unleashed is a great, greater op openness for saying, I don't know how to do this. Can, we help? can you help me? Can we establish partnerships? Uh, in fact, governments also with strapped, uh, you know, fewer resources and concern about sort of the, um, the immediate impact uh, in order to start planning for the medium term, the uh, actual reconstruction of, of ecosystems and economies at large are depending on ecosystem support organizations in the civil sector to collaborate as well. They cannot have the, they don't have attention span or the resources to, to work with specialized uh, uh, sectors, they, they want the, the ecosystem um, builders to collaborate 
And in that sense, those who have a collaboration track record will stand to gain from this new government uh, uh, attention to entrepreneurship ecosystems. And uh, it, inside governments as well, since the uh, issues are multidimensional, like uh, you both were mentioning, um, for example, in, in if we just rely on the Ministry for Entrepreneurship, which some countries have, to, to, to tackle, it's impossible for them to do it alone. They have to collaborate with um, the, food, the food authorities, the health authorities, etc. So collaboration is going to be key in the medium term uh, within government and also across the ecosystems, uh, in, in, across the sectors in the ecosystems. That, that even includes large companies. Um, with that said, there I always try to start the policy conversations highlighting different ways that uh, the variety of ways in which governments are trying to support entrepreneurs. And uh, the OECD recently published um, a compendium of uh, po policy approaches, and they uh, they found again there are three categories. Um, one is working with entrepreneurs uh, directly, uh, entrepreneurs directly, so mentorship programs uh, and and other uh, programs that, that uh, where the target beneficiaries are entrepreneurs themselves. There are also policies for the uh, institutional conditions, so uh, the environment. And then finally, there are policies for the entrepreneurship ecosystems. And that, those, that's where we're most interested in because these are uh, governments that know they have a role in unleashing something and then uh, allowing the ecosystem to uh, stand on its own two feet to then continue their work once governments change. Um, so with the, the, these few opening remarks, I turn back to you, uh, Professor Khan, in case you want to gear the direction in, in uh, there's a lot to discuss <laughs> for sure. Thank you. Thank you, Krishna. And I think that Mohsin uh, Madam, as uh, you are working with the BIDA, Bangladesh Investment Development Authority, and we know that uh, Bangladesh Investment Development Authority also took initiative to uh, create the good impact for creating the new entrepreneur. And I know that uh, BIDA is also developed one cell with the guidance of the Prime Minister office. So I'm sure that uh, uh, you have a lot of, lot of uh, effective uh, tools which already you develop between this term. So I should say that the, please, uh, can you give us idea the what policies the government has taken to support the startups? And at the same time, I'm sure that you also can give some idea what policies might be taken for the economic recovery of uh, this after COVID-19. So Mosina, Madam, please. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. I'm working as an executive member in the uh, Bangladesh Investment Development Authority, and I'm looking after the local investment promotion uh, task of the BIDA. So my, our organization is uh, currently implementing a project. It is, it is named as Entrepreneurship Skill Development Project. This project has, been, uh, has a coverage of our, all our 64 districts. We have a, a training coordinator in each district. And we are giving training to 25 youths. Uh, the business, especially the business uh, rules, regulations, regulatory processes, laws, rules, etc. And we also help them to build a business plan so that they can avail loan or fund from the uh, fund providers. This project has already trained 19,000 uh, youths, and out of them, already 3,400 has been emerged as entrepreneurs, they have in this invested 9 billion taka and they generate almost uh, 30,000 uh, employment in their, in all, through the, all over the country. So we are deeply engaging in creating entrepreneurs because investment, uh, BIDA is promoting investment, but investment will be uh, increased with, with the entrepreneurs or investors. So we think this is a way, this is a tool to uh, promote our investment promotion activities in the country. We are also working with the Oman entrepreneurships. We have a regular dialogue with our uh, women entrepreneurships. We have a dialogue in the year nine, 2019. And uh, currently in this month, we are going to convene a dialogue with the female entrepreneurs. So, and we want to know how they want to be facilitated, what they want, and how to how how government or public sector help them to uh, to be an entrepreneur. We have we have we have dialogues with venture capitals. 
the, we have already two dialogues with the venture capital funders so that they can fund our entrepreneurs in the for the project and also other entrepreneurs we are also working we are also having a meeting with a uh, tertiary institution educational institutes so that they can uh, create entrepreneur mindset in their students because everybody wants to have a job nobody wants to give a job so we want to uh, we want the educational institutes to create a mindset so that this, those uh, students can think that they can be a job giver not a job seeker so if these are we are working on these occasions on these areas but the, the, the there is a problem of fund this is a this is a very a crucial uh, i think i cannot say it is a barrier but a very uh, crucial thing because all our entrepreneurs asking for loans because we know bangladesh is a uh, was a developing country so there, there is a crunch of funds it is a very crucial problem so we are working with the government so that we can give these entrepreneurs funds it's a very i think what can i say it is a very difficult to raise funds to the entrepreneurs because they don't have any collaterals recently our government is trying to have a secure transaction act so that uh, the, uh, the funds those who have no collaterals they can uh, get obtain funds with their uh, intellectual property or uh, immovable uh, properties so all these things are in the process to help the entrepreneurs especially in the uh, covid pandemic situations the uh, entrepreneurs of our project we are trying to uh, for, uh, facilitate them with working capital we have regular meetings with the uh, banks institute financial institutions policy makers so that we can provide them working capital so that they can uh, continue their uh, projects in this uh, situation everybody knows that the there is a liquidity supply chain employment worker pro productivity all these sectors are heavily negatively impacted for the uh, pandemic and the entrepreneurs are more affected we have a we did a uh, survey in, uh, from our vida and we see that these all these areas have been very negatively impacted by the pandemic and our entrepreneurs the new ones they are more affected so we are working with them we have regular dialogues with the, them as well as the policy uh, policy makers so that we can make way out to help them and facilitate them and continue their projects in these situations thank you very much uh, thank you mosina madam i think uh, it's, a, it's a really good message for all of us the bida is already working hard as you already mentioned that 19000 plus people young people got the training and 3000 plus people is become entrepreneur and it is really good news that uh, you know that a lot of cases are entrepreneur they do not have the enough knowledge how to develop the business plan so that they can they can submit it to the banking or other non banking financial institute so thank you very much i know that uh, bida is really working hard last year, at least four to five years and it is true that uh, our university was also a one of the part of your initiative because our our department a lot of the teacher is also i know they actively they already joined in the bidas discussion so thank you very much and i'm sure that uh, you are rightly pointed out even the venture capital company i know that as i am also one of the founder of the venture capital company so i'm also one of the founder of the association but maybe due to timing i cannot uh, join a lot of the programs so shamim one of my younger brother he looks after as a president so thank you very much i hope that uh, this is the time as we already discussed in today's uh, we should develop the policy and we should develop the research networking so that the people and the university authority teacher and even even the other people at the bank is also need to need to focus on the research and what is the problem how much develop and which sector what sorts of people are really need for and which area is the really effective like you know the after covid 19 everybody you will be agree with us that food health and it you know, the virtual fair from today, we are sitting in far away from each other, but you know, the, we are meeting and we are doing our uh, discussion, brainstorming session. So anyway, Dr. Kelly, I hope that uh, if I'm asking you, how are the global leaders handling the crisis? I'm sure that as you already 
we talk with a lot of the global leaders and you are the one of the witness also how the global leaders is also overcome this crisis so if you give some idea uh, that can be also part of our research or our activities or our policy dr kelly please i wish i could say that i know a lot of global leaders and i also wish i could say that they're doing what they should be doing i can't say either one <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I think that one of the things that has happened during the pandemic is that many countries have begun to focus more inward than outward. And so um, even though the pandemic knows no borders, um, many countries took as a first response to the pandemic, well, let's close our borders. Uh, that's not the kind of outreach to other countries that is characteristic of the Global Entrepreneurship Network. Uh, that's, uh, that's an inwardly focused response. And if we're going to solve this problem and do it at a world level, we need to be focused not just on ourselves, but on the world. So for example, um, <clears throat> Internationalization is one of those things that um, is often missing from programs that teach people how to write business plans. And I can say that for sure because I've been teaching how to write business plans uh, for more than 20 years now. And uh, one of the things that I've never even done uh, is uh, specifically suggest to students that they should consider their businesses to be international. Yes, if, if a student is developing a, a web-based business, that's a business that's international from the time that it's launched. But beyond saying that, um, there isn't any uh, anything that I teach that uh, concentrates sufficiently on what happens in an international context. Uh, I think we need to uh, build into any business plan development models the fact that we are living in an internationalized world and that we need to take into account how our businesses, how our young businesses will interact with others across the world. Uh, <clears throat> I'm really heartened to hear about the number of people in Bangladesh who are interested in starting their own businesses. And I'm also, you know, what's one of the most interesting things that you said was uh, the emphasis on business plans. Uh, and I think that's true. Uh, what is fascinating to me is that uh, in the US, uh, nobody wants to write a business plan anymore. They think that a pitch deck is sufficient. And uh, they, so <laughs> I get students who believe that uh, all I have to do is, you know, come up with 10 slides somehow and people will give me money. Well, that's not true. And um, no banker will do that. And in fact, not even angel investors. So that if you look at what angel investors say they want in order to do due diligence on a company that they are considering supporting, well, there's all of the legalese uh, inherent in a term sheet that surrounds what really has to be a business plan. And so if, if what you are taught is that you can uh, create a business out of a pitch deck and nothing more, we're not really doing you a favor. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm delighted to hear that one of the things that um, the Bangladesh folks are doing is in fact teaching people how to write business plans because uh, 
one of the things that everybody knows about business plans, uh, any, any angel investor will tell you that uh, a business plan is basically dead on arrival. Uh, that whatever the entrepreneur has said is going to happen in the business plan, you can be pretty sure that that's not what's going to happen. Uh, that it's going to be something else. Uh, but what a business plan does do is provide a foundation from which a smart entrepreneur can pivot and can develop in response to conditions that weren't anticipated when the business plan was written. So, you know, if you look at the way uh, angel investors evaluate business proposals, uh, most valuation methods put at least 30% on the management team. And so really what an angel investor is doing is buying a management team. The management team, in other words, the starting entrepreneurs have to know what they're doing, have to know how they work together, have to know that uh, they can make a difference even if it requires a pivot along the way. Uh, so I think emphasis on the people is tremendously important. Uh, I agree completely that healthcare, uh, fighting hunger, dealing with the environment, uh, because yes, the climate is getting hotter and we are responsible for that. Uh, <clears throat> and the, the beauty of something like uh, IT as a way of starting a business is that relative to a business that is um, capital intensive, starting an IT company uh, can be done with a very inexpensive computer and a really good internet connection. So um, we, should, we should be concerned about the characteristics of people's access to the internet. Uh, there's, a, there's a little tiny town in Ireland called Skibbereen that managed to get uh, the local, well, the countrywide um, phone and data service facility to put in the, uh, the first, there may be more now, the first, there was a, a couple of years ago, it was the only one gigabyte link. So you sign on to your personal computer and the pipe leading away from it is a gigabit, gigabit pipe. Uh, and that's, that's phenomenal to the extent that that can be replicated with fiber optic cables uh, instead of, I mean, I, I like copper wires as much as anybody else, but they're slow. Uh, to the extent that really good internet connections can be established within a country, entrepreneurship particularly IT-based entrepreneurship will, will be much more likely to flourish. Okay, thank you. I would thank like you, to, Dr. Kelly. Very good I point. May... I, yeah, I just uh, go to the Christina. So I hope that, uh, as, I, as I already mentioned, that you have the very vast knowledge, especially you also working with a lot of leader. So maybe you should evaluate the measures and the leaders are taking around the globe what is the measure and what is the stake? Please, up to Christina. Yes, I think uh, just to add on on this training and on the individual component of, of uh, fostering entrepreneurship, the education, the might, mindset, and the discipline that we need to teach entrepreneurs uh, what, uh, or in terms of seeing the opportunity and turning that opportunity into a, a business. Um, uh, we have found, we conducted a, a bit of research uh, with a set of experts recently that uh, is now published and, uh, as part of the Index of Dynamic Entrepreneurship. And one of the things we found is um, 
yes, there are a lot of opportunities for entrepreneurs for, for entrepreneurship right now. There's a process of creative destruction going on while, a lot, while many businesses close. There are opportunities in the new consumption part, patterns, the accelerated technological change. But then a lot of uh, countries are not, uh, do not have the pool of entrepreneurs that are trained to capitalize on those. So it's, uh, we definitely need to emphasize uh, and, and stress our work and on and the importance of working on uh, education and um, supporting and mentoring the entrepreneurs and seeing those opportunities and, and, and being able to actually translate them into businesses. What we also found is that uh, it's important to have connectors. So um, this may sound self-serving because we are a network, but we've, we, found it, uh, we found that while the uh, digital channels have enabled you to expand your, uh, your network to contacts that can help you either uh, get to suppliers, clients, other co-founders, it still matters that you have someone that can uh, be, uh, provide a referral. So yes, you were able to, during this pandemic probably to access uh, an, an entrepreneur or a mentor that before you would have had to try to meet in the hallways of a Congress, physical Congress. Uh, nowadays, many were able to overcome that um, sort of requirement of having to be physically in the same place. But your ability to do that is, was actually determined by your, uh, the, your previous network. So. It's not like you can go from zero to, to that level. It, it still matters that you have to build a network and that you need to have connectors, especially on um, the investment side of things also. Uh, investors, because they don't rely on the physical cues when they, uh, they can no longer rely on the physical cues when they're meeting entrepreneurs, they still needed somebody, to, somebody that they trust to say, uh, take a look at this business plan or, or this uh, entrepreneur team. Um, so those connections uh, still matter, even when we have when we have these digital platforms that have uh, democratized access to networks. The the level, the quality of that connection still depends on on your uh, your network and the people that you that know you very well. So that's something I wanted to emphasize. That's uh, something that we uh, we have to continue working on, and not uh, think that nowadays uh, there's a free access to to networks around the world. You still need to work on on uh, hard and with a purpose when you build your network. Thank you, Krishna. So Mosina Yasmin, Madam. So I didn't come to you so that the, we can come to the conclusion about our observation. So. Again, I just uh, ask you because as you already mentioned some lot of the key points that government is already, I know, I hope that you already understood the pulse of the government, especially the prime minister and all of other people, those who are also very focused about the entrepreneurship development. So my uh, appeal to you that please can you give us some idea how the research and other activities, the collaboration, what Christina is also mentioned. So can you give some idea? Yeah. Uh, we are trying to uh, may, uh, do surveys or work in partners with the private uh, private organizations. Our project, the, I, I have mentioned the project. In, the, in that, with, with that project, we have many collaborations with the private organizations in our country, many universities and many organizations are, are the, who are working with entrepreneurship. We are working together with them. But as uh, about the mentorship, our project has a mentorship uh, component. We we uh, give mentors. We fix. We gave some mentors to, to the entrepreneurs so that they can discuss their business plans and how to uh, envisage the business plans. But those are all in a primary, uh, in very primarily. Uh, as uh, Christina is saying, I think if we have a, a research work with, with, the, with the partners in domestic partners or international partners, I think these are more constructively be patterned or devised so that we can give a very good mentorships or devising the business plans or how to change the mindsets of our entrepreneurs or our youth so that they can become a Oh, they, they want to become an entrepreneur and be successful. So it's a very wonderful suggestion. And Vida is a very, uh, what can I say? We are eager to work with the, our partners in, in the country or internationally. If somebody comes to us and if we have a joint program of a research or any other um, collaboration, 
we are very happy to do that. Okay, thank you very much. So I'm just uh, giving some uh, note that based on the discussion. So I hope that uh, I'm just uh, read, read a few of the points which I already just uh, bring in my note. So if there is anything need to add, so just final conclusion will get one by one. So I'm just uh, read, read out uh, what I'm just writing down so that the, our team can also make a paper so that we can present to the GERN and at the same time we can present to the, our ministry also. So first of all, I understood because uh, we should uh, we should know the finding the right track because a lot of cases our entrepreneur do not know what should be the right track. So that means the market demand. They should know the market demand. So that is the one of the points. Second point, I'm, I'm sure that as Dr. Kelly is also mentioned, the business plan. The business plan is also need to be clear by the startup that how they should prepare and how they should present, how they should move. And there's a lot of component. I know that a lot of the compliance, a lot of the component they need to address. So that one also need to be ensured and there should be some fixed template also for them so that they should follow. So that's why the, as Mohsina Madam is also mentioned that BIDA is taking the initiative, the training, com, com, well, that is uh, considering the business plan, I think the training is one of the key components which we need to uh, involve in the policy or research area. At the same time, I think the pitching should be the one of the factor because a lot of cases our entrepreneur they do not know have, uh, sufficient knowledge about the pitching because if they cannot present themselves through the business idea in the pitching, I think they will not get the funding. As uh, Dr. Kelly has mentioned, the angel investor and a lot of the people they always try to see the effective outcome, the proper management. So that is why I also noted down at the same time the venture capital has already I told that the venture capital also work very hard. So the venture capital also need to be policy making area. They should also be very clear focus about their activities so the people, the startup and the young people also know that what exactly the venture capital role to find out the right startup. And then again, uh, uh, Christina is very seriously point out that collaboration. The collaboration with the stakeholder, collaboration with the funding agency, collaboration with all of other ecosystem. I think this one also can bring in our policy making. And again, angel investor, and a lot of cases we, we are not aware that how the angel investor, as Dr. Kelly has mentioned, that effective management and effective outcome, that is the proper valuation, the proper valuation method, always uh, angel investor asking from the startup. So that is uh, also need to be addressed and uh, angel investor, that they are asking and their expectation need to know by the startup. So this is the one point that I, I just point out. And at the same time, uh, I just took another point from this uh, Christina and also Dr. Kelly, both of them, you also give them emphasis of the data analysis because our people, a lot of cases, they do not analyze that data, that what sorts of need in the market. So they need to focus on the data analysis that which age group or which region or what is the timing because timing is one of the important factors. After COVID-19, as Christina has mentioned, that mindset is changing people. People change a lot of the mindset. So, and again, uh, Christina has another point, technology need to ensure, because I'm completely agree, because I believe that this is a time that without technology, I think it is impossible for any startup or any entrepreneur to make their business successful. So technology need to ensure in the proper way. And also, uh, Christina has another point, that opportunities and opportunities uh, turn in business because a lot of opportunity because you see the uh, Zoom, I think overnight Zoom has become the, you know, the, the, it's the one of the billionaire company, the lot of the airlines they can buy now. Whereas I think three years back or two years back, we do not know about the Zoom properly. So that means opportunities also turn in business. Opportunities that what we like to say that the problem need to be bring in the opportunity. Problem need to be uh, addressed as a solution. And the change of the consumption and uh, need to uh, consider, and that's also Christina as another point. Uh, this is true that the, the consumer now, they are also prefer, preferring that uh, to move in the virtually. The physical movement is going to be less and maybe uh, it will be a lot of competition will be coming. And I'm sure that even the, if you go consider the real estate businessmen, they will also consider a lot of the factor, a lot of the component now to develop any apartment because people will like to get the physical facility, the gym facility, a lot of other facility, community facility, and even the buying facility, a lot of things they will like to get it into their own building, own apartment, because due to cause of this COVID, safety, security now, people will be very more curious. So thank you, Krishna, for bringing this uh, consumption need 
what you already mentioned. And again, very good point because I really love it, this point, because always I love to say to the people, thank you, Krishna, also to bring this point, mentoring support. And I should say the Mahashinda Madam also, they please keep in note, we need to address this mentoring because a lot of the startup, they are not getting the proper direction due to lack of the proper mentoring. So if we can hook up of bridging the networking with some of the successful businessmen with the, some startup, I'm quite sure that they will be successful. So thank you very much for mentioning this very good point. Mentoring support needs to be ensured from all of these uh, initiatives. And again, this uh, another point is coming network and contact need to use properly. And I believe it. This is the, a lot of cases our entrepreneur, they forget it. And I love to say that the, my, one of my example, I always give to the young entrepreneur. I started my business in 1990. And even while I was a student of the university in 1984, whatever communication network connector, connecting I developed in 1984 to until today, everything is in my database. I did not lost any contact because that's why one of the core strength I always love to say. So that's why it's, it's a good point, network and contact need to use properly. And again, another point is coming from the, all of the distinguished guests, the virtual presence instead of physical presence, which is the most most important focus point now. So that is why that the uh, startup always need to think and need to focus about the virtual presence, rather the physical existence. And of course, again, the digital platform the digital platform is again the same same uh, point as already uh, the so virtual presence instead of the physical presence. And lastly, the point, of course, everyone is already covering, especially the Mosina Madam is also mentioned, bridging with the partner. As you already mentioned that you are also working with the lot of the stakeholders. So this bridging need to be ensured. I think without the good bridging, everybody will be work, but maybe the result will not be coming. So thank you very much. I hope that now just concluding any remarks or any point, if you think that we need to address for the, to the government, please, I start with the Dr. Kelly, please. Uh, it's, it's the conclusion and sum up, both I can say. Thank you, Dr. Kelly, please. Well, I would, I would certainly second what uh, Christina said about mentoring and uh, particularly about building your network. Uh, and although it is, uh, uh, although it is easier to reach people now, uh, and honestly, this, this session is a good example of how uh, the technology is now permitting us to cross lots of international boundaries. But um, most of those of us who are on this call uh, have met each other in person before. So that's a perfect illustration of the fact that there is very little that can be a substitute for personal contact. Uh, we need to somehow translate this to a local level within multiple countries. And again, I, I think that the Global Entrepreneurship Network uh, has an opportunity to do this. Uh, we've talked about uh, angel investors, uh, but uh, we haven't talked about the Global Business Angels Network that Gen Global also runs. Uh, and so I think that if you look at the resources that Gen Global actually has, uh, <clears throat> they're in a wonderful position to try to generate um, proper responses for young entrepreneurs in multiple countries. The only thing I would say in closing is that it really is going to be important for there to be metrics that everyone will agree on to measure the possibility of progress and success. Uh, because um, particularly given what has happened to most countries taxing authorities in the uh, COVID pandemic, uh, money is going to be even tighter than it has been in the past. And funders will be looking for hard data to show the effectiveness of any proposed intervention. 
So I think we need to do some of those interventions, but before doing them, we need to agree on a way to measure the outcome that will be convincing to anyone who might be funding it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kelly. So, Krishna, please, your concluding remarks and observation at any point, like Dr. Kelly right now mentioned, because also we forget it, the taxing matter also we need to address properly because young entrepreneur startup need to get the taxing facility tax waiver from the government. So thank you very much, Dr. Kelly. I also noted down. Thank you. Christina, please. Yes, yeah, so we discussed uh, a couple of the barriers uh, that governments are responsibly directly for removing. You just mentioned one, like the taxing issue. And then we, we also um, discussed a ways to reimagine how we can um, support entrepreneurs in taking advantage of the new opportunities that are opening up uh, in, in the, during their uh, recovery and reconstruction of economies. And uh, if you, we bring that back to uh, the policy discussion, it means governments should, should, treat, should try to work with ecosystem organizations that have a very uh, specific mission of achieving those objectives and encouraging uh, when, when one organization cannot do every, everything, encouraging that collaboration with, with, within the ecosystem. So I think that's uh, one of the messages I would li I'd like to leave uh, to uh, the audience, uh, uh, the, se the section of the audience that comes from the public sector, is that we describe a lot of things that we want because this is, this is the, uh, the time now to reimagine and uh, reimagining an ecosystem uh, is it's wonderful, but then when you get to the how, it can be um, very uh, panicking. But there, there, is, there are most countries, and I know in Bangladesh this is the case, there are ecosystems, there are universities, there are different actors that are ready to support governments in achieving uh, those uh, rates of, of new, new business creation and, uh, and, and capturing the social and economic value of entrepreneurship. Thank you. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you for also pointed out that's one of the very important points. The need, the specific mission to achieve by the government for right ecosystem. Thank you. So I think Mosina, Madam, uh, now it is, I'm sure that as uh, Krishna is mentioned from the public, uh, public sector as you are representing the government. So I hope that uh, if you think that there are some few points we need to address, please. Uh, help us to just uh, point out. Thank you. Also, yeah. Madam, please. Thank you very much. Uh, we are working for promoting the uh, investment in our countries. As a part of this promotion, we are working with the regulators such as NBR, taxing problems, customs problems, port uh, problems. So we are doing, we are working on ease of doing business. So last, uh, it's a continuous process and we are always engaged in these processes so that business can be is, easy for the, our entrepreneurs and the taxes so that the startups can get incentives. So uh, we solicit for proposals, recommendations and for in the COVID period, in the pandemic, we have 18 dialogues with different stakeholders, business chambers, local, domestic and both international joint, joint chambers, uh, uh, leading industrialists in the country and outside the country. We have 18 dialects and we have a, uh, we have get many recommendations about taxes, customs, uh, ports problem and ease of doing business proposals. So we have taken those uh, recommendations and referred to the concerned ministries. And this is a continuous process. We are working on that so that our startups, entrepreneurs, and our uh, firms and industries can do their business easily and without any hassle, without having any, uh, um, uh, without expending much. So if we get any proposal, we will take over it and refer to our the concerned ministries or organizations. It's a continuous process. So uh, if we, we can work together, uh, Jane can, give us proposals or recommendations. I think BDA will refer to the government to adopt those proposals to uh, for the well-being of the entrepreneurs or to promote the entrepreneurs of the country. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Mr. Senior Madam. I think very good point is coming from Mr. Uh, Senior Madam because the mindset, the government mindset, a lot, lot of the people of the government, a lot of the body is working in the government. So mindset need to be changed. And I'm sure that Bida and other people in the government can play a very good role. And uh, another uh, request to the Mr. Senior Madam, as you already mentioned, that 18 dialogue you already organized from the Bida. So I'm sure that a lot of the point you already bringing from this 18 dialogue. If you just share with us. So the all together today's discussion and this 18 dialogue discussion, if we are getting some few points, all together we can submit it. And I am sure that the GEN, GBAN, and GRN, both of these platform is also working. Uh, I'm sure that Christina also with your team, if you can help us to make a one proper recommendation from the government, uh, I'm sure that uh, it will be giving the uh, good impact for making the policy and to uh, and to also engage in the research activities by the public, private, and other stakeholder. And thank you, Mosina Madam, and also mentioned, and I agree with you, because the NBR, you know, the, our National Board of Regulation, Regulatory Authority Revenue, National Board of Revenue, which is called NBR, uh, it is the uh, key body of our Bangladesh government, which is already collecting the tax and other revenue. So uh, Customs Authority, NBR, and as you already mentioned, because uh, I know that the Bangladesh government is always always very much careful to develop the ease of doing business ranking worldwide. You know that the uh, World Bank and a lot of other developing authorities, they always publish in every year the which country is the best in the ease of doing business. So Bangladesh, slowly, slowly, Bangladesh is doing fine. Bangladesh is doing good. So I hope that this uh, uh, G G uh, GERN activities and today some discussion, it will also play a very good role to develop this ease of business doing ranking of Bangladesh. I'm sure that Bangladesh government also will like it. Uh, so thank you very much. I'm sure that uh, we'll, a lot of the good point already we cover up. So let's, uh, uh, with this preparation, we hope that in near future with the minister and other people, uh, we'll, try to, we'll, we'll try to engage Bangladesh Central Bank and other people so that the, maybe next time, uh, we'll hopeful that uh, we'll, we are hopeful that we can organize a better, uh, effective forum. That by uh, by this way we can take a one good initiative. So thank you, Krishna, and thank you, Dr. Kelly, and thank you, Mohsin, Madam, and thank you, Beauty, for your active participation because the show is completely your success. I'm just playing as a moderator, but the whole effort is done by you. So the credit goes to Beauty, and thank you very much. <laughs>